This week, we are at the Ironman France in Nice. Hang out with double Nice winner and last year's third place in Kona, Frederick van Nieder from Belgium. And meet some of the other favorites for the Ironman France title. Nice, on France's Côte d'Azur, is known for its buzzing beaches, laissez-faire lifestyle, and beautiful architecture. But once a year, the city provides one of the most spectacular backdrops and hardest courses for Ironman. For the swim course, we have created two laps. A very big one starting right behind me, which takes the athletes out 1,000 meters offshore. After an Australian exit, athletes swim a smaller loop of 1.4 kilometers before exiting the waters on the beach. The course here in Nice is similar to a stage of the Tour de France. Very mountainous, with beautiful landscapes galore. There's an altitude difference of 2,000 meters, with three really difficult climbs, notably the 20-kilometer ascent up the Col de l'Ecre. For those athletes like Frederick van Lierde, who love to go fast downhill, there was a lot of time to gain on numerous downhill sections. The run is special in that the athletes run four laps on the Promenade des Anglais. There will be an enthusiastic crowd with plenty of time to cheer on the competitors. It is very important to be used to running in high temperatures, as the race is at midday. That's really the feature of Ironman Nice, there is always a very hot marathon. After his third place at the Ironman World Championship in 2012, Frederick van Leerde of Belgium has become one of the hottest properties in Ironman. With Kona always on his mind, the 34-year-old is back in Nice to defend his Ironman France title, and van Leerde truly appreciates the Ironman life he's living. Ironman is a journey I live with my family, of course, but then next to that, it's, it's my, my passion, and I could make my work of it, so now I have the best job I can have, I can imagine. Part of his job are the sponsorship commitments that Van Leerde takes care of at the Ironman Expo two days before Ironman France, a race that has a special place in his heart. I, I won this race twice, so uh, it's, it's like coming back to, uh, to a place where you had a big victory, it's, uh, it's always exciting. If you win for the first time and you come back, so you're, you're the defending champion, there's a certain pressure. But I think I handled it quite well last year. And uh, in fact, it was the first time I could, I could do an Ironman from start to finish on my own. So uh, that meant, that, that gave me a lot of mental strength for the rest of the season. Van Leerde used this mental strength and finished last year in a sensational third place in Kona. Get on the podium in Hawaii is still something bigger than, than winning an Ironman. That's something uh, I will remember for the rest of my life. Hawaii is something special. It's the biggest Ironman, it's the biggest triathlon on, on this, on this uh, world. Validated by his third place in Kona, he knows that the journey that started all those years ago isn't quite finished yet. And when triathlon came up, I, I was really interested in that. I saw the images of Hawaii. And of course, then the dream starts to build and uh, you want to go to that place. I've been to that place now and now the dream gets bigger and bigger and you want to win that race. So I, I hope my dream comes through. However, his initial focus is on defending his title in Nice. And at the Ironman Expo, all the buzz was about Frederick van Leerde. So this guy, Frederick van Leerde, is going to be the next Ironman world champion and he's European. We love that. The next morning, Frederick van Leerde and his team come down to the training swim at the Plage du Centre-Mer. And at this point, he tries to keep his mind off the race. I didn't think too much about tomorrow, it's just uh, relaxing in the water. It's the best thing you can do, in fact. Van Lierde continues his race preparation with a short bike ride. But the Belgian knows that the actual training is only part of the puzzle. I have a mental plan and I have a nutrition plan. But in the mental plan, it's just think about the things you have to do. And um, yeah, just don't think about the pain and, uh, and all the other things. After the bike ride, it's back to the expo with his family, where Van Leerde enjoys a relaxing massage. 
Of course, the team is, is something uh, that the people you train with, the people you, you see the whole year around. So it's, it's really nice to have uh, the people around you, you have during the year and then in an important competition like this one, that the same people are here. So it gives you a little bit more uh, comfortable feeling. Relaxed and fully focused on the task in hand, Van Leerde hopes to experience in tomorrow's race the one feeling that makes it all worth it. When you perform, when you're in a race and you feel you are the best or one of the best, it's, it's indescribable, but it's, it's a great feeling. It hurts, of course, and then crossing that finish line, everything that comes with a great race is just probably the reason why we, we do all those trainings and, and all, those, uh, all those races. The day before the race, Frederik van Leerde and the other pros meet at the famous Negresco Hotel for the press conference. As always, the media interest is huge, and one of the big questions is if 70.3 specialist Bart Ehrenerts can challenge his compatriot Van Leerde over the full Ironman distance. A full Ironman is, is double the time, double the distance, but you need to be very smart during the race. You need to think about everything, nutrition, um, food, everything is very important. Half Ironman, you don't need to think about pacing yourself too much. It's a long race, but it's, you can get away with a few smaller mistakes. Uh, Ironman, you need, to, uh, you need to be smart during the race. Last year's second place, Paul Amy, comes with podium ambitions. And unlike some of the other athletes, he doesn't mind the heat in Nice. It's always hot here. You know, as soon as you get onto the run, there's no shade. Uh, you're out in the, in the sun all day for, you know, eight and a half hours. So uh, hydration plays a big factor into the race. So for me, the heat, uh, even though it's going to be hot, uh, compared to the other guys, I'm hoping it's, uh, it's going to be one of my advantages. Coming back from injury, Spain's Clemente Alonso McKiernan wants to focus just on his own race. I normally don't have a game plan. Normally if I did the Ironman by myself, I'd do the same race. So I'll try to do my best and to see things. i uh, try not to drop too much on the run and, and stand the heat the best I can. Women's favorite Mary Beth Ellis arrives in France with an unbeaten record outside of Kona. But the American doesn't take the victory for granted. Records are meant to be broken, so I'm sure it'll get broken at some point. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to, to get a win, but, you know, the other girls, uh, I always say the, the French girls race very well at home. They know the, the courses, they love hard bikes, so they're going to make it really tough. It's true, it really is a course that's made for me. I've trained here for a long time, and I know that I've prepared myself well since the start of the season. And it's nice to know that I'll get good support from the public here. It's the evening before the race, and Frederick van Leerde also arrives in transition to drop off his bike. Like everyone else, he feels the excitement before tomorrow's big day. Everybody is quite excited right now, racking their bikes and, uh, and their backs. So, uh, yeah, the excitement is uh, going to build up now. It's the morning of Ironman France. While some of the pros are still busy in transition, Frédéric van Leerde is already on the Promenade des Anglais to get himself ready for the swim start. At this point, even an experienced pro like him feels the pressure. Of course, there's a little bit of nervousness and some excitement, but you have to, uh, otherwise you're not ready for the race. So uh, it's a good feeling. With fellow Belgian Bart Arnouts preparing nearby, Van Leerde's focus is only on the race. It's a different feeling in the morning when you see your competitors, but uh, you know, just stick to your plan and uh, do whatever you have to do and, and don't look at the others. That's, that's the best way to handle that. It's everybody is doing his own thing and uh, after the race we're uh, friends and, colleague, and normal colleagues again, but now it's a bit of competition. As more and more pros arrive at the water's edge, the race start is only minutes away. All Ironman athletes will embark on their journey with a two-loop swim in the Mediterranean. There is an Australian exit after the first loop of 2.4 kilometers, followed by another 1.4K loop in the sparkling waters of the Bay of Angels. At 6.25, the horn gives the official start to the 2013 Ironman Nice. The race is on for the pros. Shortly after, more than 2,500 age groupers plunge into the azure blue waters of the Plage du Centenaire.
Nice has been a triathlon hotspot for over 30 years. For the last nine years, it has been the host of Ironman France, attracting both amateurs and the world's premier long distance triathletes year after year. At the front of the race, a lead group of three is formed early on. Frederick van Lierde, Spaniard Clemente Alonso McKernan and former long-distance swimmer Anthony Panier France are pushing a fast pace. Behind them, a chase group including Bruno Clairvaux, Paul Hawkins and Bart Aronuts. In the midst of the golden caps, the two silver ones of the fastest female swimmers in the field, Mary Beth Ellis of the United States and the Czech Lucy Reed. Frederick van Leerde is first out of the water at the Australian exit. After a few steps on dry land, van Leerde, Alonso McKernan and Panier take on the second lap of 1.4 kilometers in the waters of the Mediterranean. About two minutes later, the chase group reaches the Australian exit. Mary Beth Ellis and Lucy Reed have not let up finishing their first lap in 33 minutes. The third woman, France's Delphine Pelletier, is far behind at this stage. Up front, the lead group of Frederick van Leerde, Alonso McKernan and Anthony Panier are swimming at an even faster pace in the second lap. After 47 minutes and 59 seconds, Alonso McKernan exits the water first just ahead of defending champion Van Leerde. Anthony Panier trails them by 18 seconds. The majority of the pros are about three minutes behind after the swim. Merely three and a half minutes later, the fastest woman, Mary Beth Ellis, gets out of the water in ninth position overall. Not losing any time in the transition, Frederick van Leerde is the first to grab his bike, embarking on one of the most spectacular bike courses on the Ironman calendar. Clemente Alonso McKernan is hot on Frederick van Leerde's heels, leaving the transition seven seconds later. Will Frederick van Leerde take his third Ironman France crown? And will anyone get in the way of Mary Beth Ellis? Find out after the break. Straight from the start of the bike course in downtown Nice, Frederick van Leerde is speeding ahead of his closest competitor, Clemento Alonso McKernan. The 180-kilometer bike course is the jewel of Ironman France, meandering through picturesque villages and stunning landscapes. However, there will be no time for the pros to enjoy the beauty of this very technical course as they tackle 1,800 meters of climbing. The highest point is the Col de l'Ecre at 1,120 meters above sea level, where the athletes face gradients in excess of 6%. Mary Beth Ellis is the first woman to get on the bike. The determined triathlete from the US is leaving no doubt about what her aim is. The only one able to keep up with her, Lucy Reed. On his way into the mountainous hinterland of Nice, Fred van Leerde raises the bar high, gradually increasing the lead over his competitors. His closest follower remains Clemente Alonso McKernan. 
But 27.9 kilometers into the race, the Spaniard is already trailing by more than three minutes. But behind him, Bart Ehrenhutz rides at the same pace as Van Leda up front. The Belgian seems fixed on climbing up the places. On the woman's side, Mary Beth Ellis has started her climb up towards Col de Lacre. While she powers ahead at a high average uphill speed, strong swimmer Lucy Reed is continually losing ground. More than seven minutes behind at this stage, Jean Collonge and Delphine Pelletier of France. Two hours into the race, Bart Ernut's efforts pay off as he is breathing down Clemente Alonso's neck. He overtakes the struggling Spaniard with ease and is now in second place behind Fred van Lierde. Seventy kilometers into the race, the Belgian has reached Col de Lacre. Fred van Lierde is working hard to break his own bike course record set in 2012. In the following downhill sections, Van Leerde profits from his excellent bike skills, while Bart Ehrenhutz, after gaining time on the uphill, fails to keep up with Fred Van Leerde's crazy downhill speed. In the meantime, Paul Amy of the UK, who came second in 2012, has had to withdraw from the race. Right now, double knees champion Van Leerde looks invincible, but in Ironman, anything is possible, and his fellow countryman Bart Ehrenhutz is not ready to give up his pursuit yet. Trailing the Belgian duo, Clemente Alonso McKernan has lost touch with the lead. Anthony Panier of France, third after the swim, is also having trouble with this extremely challenging bike course. But after the crash, he carries on unharmed. Nearly two thirds into the bike, Van Lierde and Aronuts meet after the turning point on the course. Aronuts is struggling to get closer. 80 kilometers into the bike, disaster strikes for Mary Beth Ellis as she misjudges a very sharp turn. Will she be able to keep her frenzied pace after this setback? Ellis seems unimpressed and all the more motivated. Her fellow competitors are not able to profit from Ellis's mishap. More than halfway through the race, Jean Collonge and Delphine Pelletier are way behind the powerhouse from Washington, D.C. At the front of the race, Frederick van Leer is back in town. He has kept up his pace on the second half of the demanding course, smashing his own bike record from last year by more than two minutes. As Bart Herenuts approaches the bike finish, he meets his fellow countrymen again. This time round, Van Leer is already wearing his running shoes. But the bike course record doesn't last long. Age grouper and former road cyclist Antonio Mascolom needed only four hours and 30 minutes. After the bike, Van Leer has a comfortable lead, but Herenuts is known to be a very strong runner. It looks like her crash had no impact on Mary Beth Ellis. On the contrary, her closest follower, Jean Collonge, reaches T2 more than 10 minutes after her. In the run, athletes will be treated to a flat and fast four-loop course along the iconic Promenade des Anglais, with plenty of spectator support and views of the Mediterranean. Frederick van Leerde takes a lead of 8 minutes and 35 seconds onto the run course, and the Belgian once again looks like he's flying away from the rest of the field. But already 10 kilometers into the run, he's clocking slower times than Aronuts behind him, and his lead has been reduced to 6 minutes and 14 seconds. Alonso McKernan now in third place. At the front of the women's field, nothing has changed, and Mary Beth Ellis is on her way to yet another Ironman title. Carried by the wave of support, Nice local Jean Collonge maintains her second place almost 12 minutes behind Ellis. 
In third, another Frenchwoman, Delphine Pelletier. With the sun now out at full strength, the marathon is a scorching finish, and both age groupers and professionals like Frederick van Leerde appreciate any water they can get their hands on. At this point of the race, halfway through the marathon, van Leerde is still losing time. He never looks troubled or tired, but in Ironman anything is possible, and Bart Aronuts is now only four minutes behind him and gaining a minute every five Ks. Can he catch the older Belgian? In third, Clemente Alonso McKernan with an impressive return from injury. Approaching the halfway mark in the marathon, Mary Beth Ellis is now in cruise control. She really is one of the most powerful female athletes in the world, and she even extends her lead to 12 minutes and 8 seconds ahead of second place Jean Collonge and 13 minutes and 9 seconds ahead of Delphine Pelletier in third. Aware of Aronuts behind him, Frederick van Leerde picks up the pace on the last loop. Averaging speeds of 3 minutes 42 seconds per kilometer, the 34-year-old clearly doesn't want to let his third consecutive Ironman France victory slip away. And despite Aronuts' best efforts, the man who's won two 70.3 races this year can't catch his friend Frederick van Leerde anymore. It's going to be another memorable Nice triumph for the man from Menon in Belgium. It has been a tough battle with Aronuts in the heat of Nice, but Frederick van Leerde stayed strong on the last loop of the marathon, and you can see what this victory means to him. What a triumph for the newly crowned King of Nice, who also sets a blistering new course record of eight hours, eight minutes, and 59 seconds. Bart Aronuts gave it his best, and with the fastest ever marathon run in Nice, he made up over five minutes on Van Leerde, claiming a deserved second place. In third place, Clement Alonso McKernan from Spain. But the big win of the day is Frederick van Leerde, who destroyed his own course record and is coming closer to Marcel Zamora's record of five consecutive Nice wins. It's my third victory in a row, but uh, Bart really gave me a hard time and uh, I really had to work for it and, and bring on my best, my best uh, performance ever, I think. Uh, oh man, this was, this was so hard. I think uh, I have a time 8.08. On such a course, I think that's 13 minutes faster than last year. So I'm still making progression, but you know the younger guys are coming. So uh, uh, it's good for Belgium. We are now two two guys and Marino with us. We are three guys who are really on on top of the games. Yeah, I'm very happy with the second place today. Uh, I think in general I had a great day. I had a great race. But you know what, Fred was even uh, Frederick was even stronger today. So uh, I need to be happy with the second place. Uh, I started the marathon with uh, over eight minutes back, probably, and then I came closer and closer. But uh, it was too long in the end. There was, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't make it to the first place anymore. In the women's race, Mary Beth Ellis stays untouchable right until the end, and the 35-year-old continues her incredible series of winning every Ironman race she entered outside of Kona. The winner of the 2013 Ironman France, Mary Beth Ellis. I'm so excited to win Ironman France here in Nice. Um, it's an iconic race and just one of the hardest courses out there on the Ironman circuit. Nice local Jean Collange crosses the finish line in second place, around eight minutes behind Ellis. And another Frenchwoman, Delphine Pelletier, claims the final podium place in her first ever Ironman. What a great day for women's Ironman racing. Even though the thoughts of all the athletes were with the family of an age grouper who tragically died on the bike course, hundreds and hundreds of amateurs from around the world finished their personal Ironman France journeys until late in the night. And for many, a long-held dream comes true.
In this week's Kona Pro Rankings, Nice winner Frederick van Leder has moved into third place, and Bart Arenuts, who was second in Nice, has moved past Andreas Raylet into sixth. Raylet now has to finish the race in Klagenfurt to qualify for Kona. In the women's Kona Pro Rankings, Nice winner Mary Beth Ellis and also Coeur Lane winner Heather Vertler moved up into fourth and sixth place respectively. Last year's world champion Leander Cave still sits in first place. Next week, we go to Klagenfurt, Austria, for one of the most popular Ironman races in Europe. We follow last year's second place at their world championship, Andreas Raylet from Germany, before his first Klagenfurt outing. And update you on other Ironman events from around the world.